And so let's go into AWS services for generative AI. How can our our listeners actually be uh, taking advantage of all the techniques that you already outlined in today's episode? Thanks, John. Um, uh, to be, uh, we want to be completely upfront. We don't have experience with Azure and uh, GCP at this stage, but that's definitely something we're looking forward to um, developing in 2025. And in terms of AWS, uh, indeed, we've worked with it for now over two and a half years. And uh, what uh, we, yeah, let's break it down. So AWS has a great stack of services. Services they call the generative AI stack, um, and they range in terms of uh, high level to low level. So at the very high level, like the super easy to use uh, AWS service for um, in the generative AI space is Amazon Q. And Amazon Q uh, is kind of like the way I remember it is. You know, in, uh, in James Bond, there's the, the guy that gives them all the tools, the cars and so on. I think his name is Q, right? So yes. think, uh, Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. I think that's maybe where they got the name from. Kind of like it's it's your assistant, uh, your generative AI assistant in AWS. And you can use it for lots of different things. The main two that uh, are good to know for any business user, because they're so easy to use, so easy to roll out, um, is uh, Amazon Q Business and Amazon Q Developer. Now, what you need to know with Amazon Q is that you don't even think about the underlying foundation model. Like, remember that cake we were talking about? With Amazon Q, the cake is all done for you. Like, you don't even get to choose the base model. You don't get to customize it or anything like that. You just plug and play type of thing. So in in some use cases, uh, business use cases, this can be a very easy, quick win for your business. Uh, So Amazon Q business, basically what it, let's talk about the two, right? Amazon Q business, what it does is it can combine lots of different um, um, sources together to for you to interact with at the same time. So, for example, uh, you might use some AWS services like uh, S3 that stores uh, uh, stores um, objects, uh, RDS that stores uh, like it's a database, uh, Aurora, Kendra that searches things in your organization. Then you can uh, combine that with external applications like your Gmail, your Dropbox, your Slack, your Zendesk. Just think of any application. They, they have um, integrated ones. Then you, there's also plugins. You can plug in Jira, Salesforce, uh, Zendesk again, and others. And all of that can be uh, combined into a foundation model, which you can also control. You, can find, you, know, you can't fine-tune it, but you, can, you have some settings. You have some admin controls. And so basically, when a user goes in, um, this... Amazon Q Business will you can ask Amazon Q Business. Oh, you know what? Uh, what does uh, what? What does Jira say? Or what is? Uh, what do we have in this Dropbox? Or it might ask questions, and then this foundation model can go to all these places and get answers. Uh, it can also uh, augment those answers with um, its underlying knowledge that it already has. So if you can't find the answer in your organization's data, it'll just generate the answer. You can switch turn that on and off. So it's kind of like getting a foundation model with RAG that just hooks up to all of your applications inside your business that you're using, and you don't have to do much. It's like a plug-and-play type of thing. It's a very uh, ex- uh, efficient way, and of course, it comes with the right security controls that you can set up in Amazon and things like that. So a very powerful tool if you don't want to go into any level of depth on the foundation model side of things. And Amazon Q Developer is uh, for developers. It's kind of like it has two parts. Uh, it's uh, it can help your developers kind of like a copilot, uh, like GitHub copilot. It can help uh, your developers code. Uh, it can be done in JetBrains, Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio, and so on. So it helps you uh, even in CLI. It helps you like command line interface. Uh, it can uh, help your developers with their programming, and or you can also use it as an assistant for your AWS account. So like if you have servers inside AWS, S3 buckets, Lambda function, things like that, it can help you uh, get information about them. I think they're going to be rolling out uh, functions that it can actually help you modify things on the, on the go through Amazon Q developer. So it's another way to maybe, it's more like to make your developers more efficient in coding and working with AWS services. So, and there's also other types of Amazon Q, like for visualization, things like that. But it's just something you need to be aware of is that Amazon Q has this Amazon has this really cool tool, Amazon Q, which is very high level way of using generative AI, uh, more in a plug and play kind of style without much modification. So yeah, that's uh, number one. Then if we go, that's a very high level. Then we go one, there's three levels. So we go one level uh, down, we've got bedrock, right? It's it's 
Um, not as high level as Amazon Q, but it's also not the most uh, granular level. It's somewhere in between where you do get access to um, the foundation models and you can choose your foundation models. You can customize them. All the things that we, we've we spoken before, um, You, uh, it's got a very good uh, pricing model where you uh, most of you pay as you go for your usage. So it's very cost efficient. You can customize, you can do prompt and engineering, RAG, create agents, and things like that. So everything that we've talked about before gives you access to lots of different models, uh, proprietary and open source. Uh, definitely a very a powerful uh, tool somewhere, again, in between. It's uh, it's not very high level. It's not very low. Level. And then if we go lower, the lowest level, like the most granular level of generative AI that you can get in uh, uh, AWS, that is uh, SageMaker. SageMaker is a tool that can allow you to uh, build, uh, train, uh, build, train, um, modify, deploy machine learning models, not just uh, generative AI, but machine learning in general, including generative AI. It's a, it's a subset of uh, uh, machine learning. And it can help you do the whole machine learning pipeline from start to finish uh, and deploy those models. We're not going to go into too much detail, but what you need to know is that in AWS, <laughs> again, it sounds like we're promoting AWS, but uh, it is like the most popular tool uh, in uh, the market. Uh, in AWS, you have this um, very granular way of dealing with your uh, models. Like in SageMaker, there's SageMaker Jumpstart, which gives you access. Also, like Bedrock, it gives you access to these foundation models. But here, you when you get them into SageMaker, you can do much more with them, much more granular customizations and uh, deployment options and things like that. So it's a uh, if you have like a very specific need that is not you're not able to meet with Bedrock, uh, you can get into SageMaker and do all those things. But of course, you need to be more technical. You need a more technical uh, people on your team or a more technical partner that will help you uh, with uh, these customizations. But the option is there to go into much more depth. Nice. Thanks for going into that detail. So just to recap quickly, from highest level, kind of least granular, but easiest to apply, you have Amazon Q then Bedrock, and then SageMaker. And Adlin, I think you have some anecdotes about uh, SageMaker experiences. Yes, absolutely. Actually, uh, SageMaker is one of the very first AWS services that I used, so um, I do have a lot of experience with it. There are three features that I absolutely love about SageMaker. I'll start with the least exciting one, which is uh, SageMaker Data Wrangler, uh, which is an amazing tool to help you pre-process your data easily. Uh, which is an important part of a you know a machine learning pipeline. Uh, then the second feature that I absolutely love is uh, SageMaker Canvas, and that's where the funny anecdote is. It's the fact that uh, you know for the past ten years I've built and trained a lot of machine learning models, which took me you know a lot of hours you know to train each of them because I had to do the the hyperparameter optimization process you know hyperparameter tuning. And um, and there is this data set that I always use as benchmark to compare the performances of different machinery models. And the funny thing about uh, SageMaker Canvas is that uh, in just a few clicks, therefore in just five minutes, I was able to build, train, and tune a machinery model that beat the performances of all the different machinery models that I used and trained on this same data set, but in hours. So uh, that was crazy. That's the crazy uh, part about SageMaker, it's so powerful and so user-friendly and so easy to use. And the third feature that I absolutely love about SageMaker is um, SageMaker Jumpstart. So remember, John, when you were saying that actually, uh, you know, LLMs are included in foundation models because, in fact, you can have foundation models for many different applications besides large language models. Well, in SageMaker Jumpstart, you can found foundation models for many different applications, you know, for example, the LLMs, but also for computer vision, for NLP, natural language processing, and many different kinds of applications. And that's the cool thing about this. You can just take them and use them for uh, different applications. 